Ah, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Neil Madlock. Man, thank you for watching our podcast, Tell the Truth. I got my host to my left, my boy, my big brother. We got Billy Wood or B. Woods, you know, when he do a little gambling. You know, I like to call him Billy Woo Woo. But when he in his studio, what's his name? BT Bill. What's that for? Bowtie Bill. Oh, God, dog, it's going to be a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> man, let's take care of the business first before we get to the, get the show rolling, man. Well, tell everyone, thanks for watching. Tell the truth. We in our beautiful D- Dollar Studio, man. These guys, Maximize Your Potential is the name of the studio, man. These guys say, you know what? You guys need to. Y'all need to do this in the real studio. Come on in here. Boom. So we want to tell them guys, thank you for uh, inviting them to their house, man. Very much so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we about to just get right to it, man. You know, um, you know, Billy, I'm going to let you um, go ahead and throw out the first question of the day, man. You know, what you feel like talking about, Uncle Billy? Man, good, bad, and different. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys. That's where we are, right? In Dallas, Texas. What are your thoughts about that? All right, here we go, man. Check this out. Like I mentioned in the podcast before, this is why I cannot watch um, you know, the football games with fans, you know, because they mm-hmm. don't know what they're looking at. So let me give the, uh, the scope to people that's outside of Dallas, people okay. that don't live here, you know what okay. I'm saying? They have them understand, you know. So down here in Dallas, these Cowboy fans, Every time they lose, they play bad. All you hear is that trash. He's the problem. He's this and he's that and all this. And I be looking at the game like I don't even like the Cowboys, and he's not the problem. Right. And so I find myself in Dallas now, defending Dak, and I'm not even a Cowboy fan. Man, <laughs> you know what I'm imagine <laughs> you know what I'm that. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like they would be ready to be hot with that, and I'm not saying Dak is like Joe Montana or. Mahomes, but, you know, he ain't trash. He's not, like, trash, trash. You know what I mean? So, you know, my thing on Dak is I think Dak, to me, is above average. Now, you know, me and you go back and forth. I say he might be in the top 12. You say maybe 15. But the bottom line is he ain't in the bottom 10. You know what I mean? So if you top 12 or 15, that means you're good enough to go to the playoff because, as far as my knowledge, Billy, how many teams go to the playoff? 14. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if you last year, 14. Right. <laughs> right. Seven on one side, seven on the other side. Exactly. So my my opinion on Dak is that this, to answer your question, I think he's above serviceable. I think he is a good quarterback. I have more of a problem with the, the play calling of the Cowboys. Now, in their game against the Chargers and uh, the game last week with the Rams, what I noticed is a lot of rolling out. They ain't been doing it that much, rolling it out. Uh, Dak also, I will admit, has been stepping up and going to the right a lot. So something's going on with that, but he's got a lot of good rhythm on that. Um, For you fans, you know, because that's why I don't watch football with fans. I watch it only with my guru brothers or people that know what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. For you fans, when a team is playing zone against the Cowboys, and if they, if the the key to the zone is like any, with any, any defense, you got to get to the quarterback. That's blitzing, man to man, whatever. But if you do not get to the quarterback in a zone, what happens, and if he steps up and moves around, what happens is now that linebacker might right here. But when he goes to his right, now that linebacker is still right here, but now it's different angles now. So the zone is going to look different to him. So now you have different passing angles. But a fan don't know that. You know what I mean? And that's why I can't watch football with fans. So to answer your question, the last two weeks, I've liked the adjustments of the play calling. I actually like the patience that he showed. And even though the Cowboys have not been running the ball good that much this year, and that's another subject, I know what's going on with that. Uh, maybe should have kept uh, Zeke. Anyway, um, even though they haven't been running the ball good, they have continued to stay with the run. So in general, the team is looking better, but I don't think Dak is bad as most people put him out to be. To answer your question, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give Dak probably about a 7.5. I don't think he's the main reason they're losing. So, what's your thought, bitch, bro? What you think? <clears throat> man, it's a lot to unpack right there, man. Dak is a good quarterback. Mm-hmm. More than serviceable. Agree. Agree. 
I'm a Steelers fan. Do not like the Cowboys. <laughs> Full disclosure. You almost made me drop my water. <laughs> Full disclosure. I'm not a Cowboys fan. I'm not a Cowboy fan either. Right. I, I tell everybody, I'm in Dallas, and I'm a proud Cowboy hater. I'm just keeping it 100. But go ahead, Billy. <laughs> right. But got to speak the truth. Got to yeah. tell the yeah. truth. Yeah, we tell the truth. Yeah. He's more than serviceable. Dak yeah. is a top 10 quarterback in my book. He, he, he really is. The deal with Dak is – he, at times, is not a consistent quarterback, right? Agree. Yeah, agree. Right? Yeah, agree. Agree. Right? Yeah. So so, so, so there are games where Dak looks like a top five quarterback, and then there are times where he makes rookie mistakes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You go back to the uh, Arizona game. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, Four that was, quarter. That was a bad inception. It was three guys right there. Three yeah. guys. Yeah. Agree. Right? Mm-hmm. Rookie mistake. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. But then uh, last week against the uh, Rams, he was 25 or 31. Exactly. So that's why I understand Cowboy fans' frustration when they're like, wait a minute, though. What about that Arizona game, like you just said? You know, and that is bad. You know, I'm, I'm not defending that. You know, you, you can't do that. That was some, <laughs> some bad throws in there, too. But also a lot of it, to me, is play calling, too. You know. Agreed. Um, we talked about that the last segment about two thirds mm-hmm. is on the coaching. coaching. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, um, I used to know the exact number, but I can't like re- remember. But it's uh, what sure. it is now. But it's a crazy stat that you know if you look up what it is, uh, if Dak has like more than thirty five attempts, like the Cowboys lose like almost like sixty seven percent of games. More than that, it's so, higher than that, right? So if, uh-huh. if I know that, mm-hmm. you know, even though I'm a guru and I'm talking to another guru, but you know. The coaches got to know that. So that means if I know we pass the ball more than 35 times, that's better in our chances of losing, then we probably want to ground and pound. But that ain't how – that's not what Jerry want to see. He want to see the ball thrown around, the cheerleaders and long bombs, and look how we went. Entertainment. You said this a long time ago, and I don't even want to – I got to put I gotta put both of them on camera on this. You said this a long time ago. You said so many – it was a it was a billyism. It was a billyism. But it was facts, and you was like – Jerry would rather lose 35 to 31 than lose, than win 20 to 17. Yes. And when you said that, I was like, dang, that's a nugget. You know, because we like to drop nuggets on each other. You know, and Mm -hmm. we, I forgot we was debating about that night. And when you said it, it's like, ah, he got me. Like, ah, he got me. He dropped the mic on me. Ah, he got me. Ah, you know, I was like hurt. I was like, man, you know, I didn't think about that one. But I remember that. And I'm not going to sit here and say it on our podcast and make it sound like that was my idea and, and, and steal your thunder. I'm going to give you your roses. Right. You you said that. And when you said it, I was like, man, my boy, like, that is powerful. So, you know, maybe he, he don't want to run the ball more with that, but when he's less than 35% of the pass, um, 35 attempts, it's like they win 68% of their games. So my thing is that if you and I know this, right, and they got all these statisticians and all this stuff, and hell, I think they even got AI coaching nowadays. <laughs> we don't know what's going on them with our sports. but Bro, they turn on the tape. <laughs> and so my thing is if you know that, then run the ball more. Now people might say, oh, that sounds simple, but it really is that simple. You know, football is not as difficult as what people think it is. You know, you go talk to any Cowboy fan, Cowboys when they were successful in the 90s, you know, I know some of them guys, and I don't want to say who say what, but a lot of times them guys had maybe 15, 20, 40 formations, but really was only running eight plays. Right. A lot of people don't know that. Right. But see, that's why I can't talk sports or football with certain people because they don't know. So a lot of that stuff y'all saw in the, the play action and going all this other stuff, that was just like, you know, window dressing. Window dressing. But it was still the same place. Right. You know, for instance, a team that's great that, that do that right now is the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins run the same damn plays, bro. Real talk. If you really know what you're looking at, they the same doggone plays, my boy. I promise you they are. That's why the passes are always usually in the middle of the field, in the hash mark area. There's a reason why. All that, them running, why I'm going, why receivers running this way, that running, in, put three up. My boy, it's going to end up in the same play, I promise you. So in my, in my aspect of it is I don't really believe Dak as much as a problem coming back home to the question. I really believe that it's more of the coaching. I believe that you got to ground and pound more. And that's one of the reasons why they actually beat the Chargers because they actually stuck with the run even though they could not run the ball. You right. know what I mean? So I was real impressed on it. But I got off my rant, man. Go on, go on okay. Ahead, Billy. 
Let me give the viewers and, and, and the subscribers the backdrop behind that 35-31 loss versus a 21-17 win. Go ahead. Right? A peek behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. Okay? Jerry's an entertainer. <laughs> right. Have not won, the Cowboys have not won, or at least been to the NFC Championship game since 1995. 27 years. 96 yeah. or 95? 96. Okay. My, my 95. 95. Okay. 27 95. years. Okay. Right? That Woo. said, right, that said mm. they're worth $10 billion. So what so 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 what is the game for them to win? <laughs> You remember Gladiator? <laughs> when you when Russell Crowe said, Are you not entertained? <laughs> right? They'll get on TV, have the, have the highest ratings. They could go 4 and 12, have the highest ratings. Yeah. Or are you not entertained? Man. Or are you not entertained? Okay, so, right. So, that said, bro, another level. Hold, to hold this. on, can I stop you? Go ahead. You hot right, you hot right now. That was another billyism. That's the second one of the show. We had another billyism. All right, go ahead, Billy. <laughs> right? Okay. Oh my God. Right? Tony Romo, uh, two and four in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Highest paid sports broadcaster. Yeah. Where's Troy Aikman? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Michael Irving. Yeah. He on two shows. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Jimmy Johnson. Jason Garrett, eight and eight. Jason Garrett, <laughs> where, where, where is he at? NBC. Oh, I forgot he Sunday is on night. NBC. He do good, man. Huh? How about them Cowboys? They on TV everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Are you not entertained? <laughs> oh my God! I know. Haven't my... won nothing in twenty-seven years, bro. Yeah, you so, know what? We go, we gonna say that on another okay, podcast. Okay, yeah. We don't want to, cause see, we, now it's not like we beating up on them, but cause we're tell getting the truth. It, well, that is the name of the podcast. Tell the truth, you know what I mean? So that's we're gonna do a special podcast one day for people that's not in Dallas. So y'all know what's going on. We live down here, you know, right. and tell we're gonna tell the truth on why the Cowboys are really hated on so much, and it's not because of. It. All oh, these people jealous, and no one's jealous, Cowboys. Truth be told, I like y'all coach. Beautiful stadium. Like mm -hmm. We live on the stadium is phenomenal. Phenomenal. The number one reason why the Cowboys are hated on is because of the fans. They're like, they're not realistic. But that's a whole nother podcast. We, what we wanted to address was the whole, you know, Dak yeah. theme. Um, I really don't believe Dak is that bad. I do believe, now I understand the frustration. You're paying this man, look, like 60 million, big, big bro, something 40, like Yeah, you're a little bit over 40. Okay, on the side of 40. Yeah, so you're paying him big money. Don't get me wrong. So you should be past him being serviceable. I agree with Cowboy fans on that. So I give y'all a couple of points on that. I give it to you. But I don't think he's trash. And I really believe if you run the ball more, you know, you guys will, will, will put you in a better situation. You know what I mean? But I know that mind frame is kind of like, Oh man, that's that's crazy because we shouldn't have to pay him that type of money and play like that. That's that part is true. That part is true. But guess what? Guess what great coaches do? They adjust to what the heck they got. That's okay. what great coaches get. That's what they do. There are two types of communication, mm -hmm. right? Verbal and nonverbal. Mm. Okay. In the playoffs, when Dak threw that interception against San Francisco, which one? <laughs> <laughs> Did I said that a lot. My year, fault. My fault. Last year in the first quarter. I got you. Man. On the out route. On, I get, I get. Right, right. On the seven route. Right. That means that you go down the field and you go out toward the boundary between the numbers and the sideline. That's a seven right. route. That's a seven route. That's a seven route. That, well, fellow gurus, y'all know. <laughs> let me look into the camera. Right. Fellow gurus, y'all know what that what the seven route is. For you fans, we're just breaking it down to you because we talk a lot of guru football talk. But go ahead. Okay. So so he was late on the throw. Right, mm -hmm. interception. Mm. Nonverbal communication, right? I said there are two types of communication, verbal and nonverbal. The nonverbal communication, Dak walks to the sideline with his mouth wide open, his eyes like during headlights. Like, what happened? Maybe he didn't know what fans, happened. <laughs> that is what fans really hate. That's what the Cowboy fans really hate. His nonverbal <laughs> when he messes up in big games. Man, I, I, I get what you're saying. It, it's body language. 
And me Why being an old ex, you know, me being a Bears fan, I hated Jay Cutler. Because it was like, Jay Cutler would throw inception, and you swear to God, he just go sell the bitch, and you just sweat, it's just like he'd just be cracking the beer, had a joint in his mouth, like, yep, life was good. Like, motherfucker, we in the middle of a game, you throwing pick six, and he'd just be on the sideline, like, yeah, I got my 20 million, I don't give a right. hell about these fans. So, I understand the body language. So, in that aspect, yeah, the body language is real, real bad. But, you know, that's what... Some people's body language is not going to be on point all the time, Billy. You know He that? does it all the time, though. He'll throw an interception in a crucial situation, Uh-oh. walk to the sideline with his mouth wide open, his eyes buckshot, like, man, what happened? <laughs> okay, so. And the fans say, man, Dak ain't it. <laughs> That's where it comes from. All right, so you said because the majority of it is body language. Sometimes they don't even catch his body language on tape, my boy. And these fans down here be going crazy like, Dak is not, Dak ain't it, man. But, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Man, we we going to mess up and eat up the whole podcast. Right, right, right. So, so, before we move on. Patrick. Hold on. I know before we move on, man. Is Dak a good quarterback, yes or no? Yes. Okay. He's a good quarterback. All right. He's not he's not in top five or top seven, but he's a good quarterback. Good quarterback in my book is between seven and twelve. Right. He's a good quarterback. Eight and twelve. If you ask me, he's a good quarterback. Dak a good quarterback. Yes. He's a good quarterback, man. Yes. For real, man. But yo, know, we gotta move on to the next topic, man. Man, Uncle Billy. The State of the Union on them Kansas City Chief. Yes, sir. Mm, mm, yes, sir. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, so man, um, before I take off, I'm going to let you go first on this one. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So what do you think? They just lost last week. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the Chiefs as of right now and then mm-hmm. where they're going? Okay, okay, all right. The way you tailored that question, as of right now. Right. 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 <laughs> okay. <clears throat> just bear with me for a moment. <laughs> the, twa- the, twa- the Taylor Swift scenario is for real. Wait, 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 wait. What do you right. mean by for real? Like, you like it? Yes. You like this whole Taylor Swift garbage? Garbage? Yeah, I said garbage, bro. Are you serious, you made bro? Chat, man, I'm, bro, I'm sick of that. Yes. Man, I want to watch my football, bro. It is for real. Man, what, what do you mean by for real, bro? I want to watch football. I don't care about no Taylor Swift, Swifty Taylor. Patrick Mahomes. Oh, here we go. Bro. Threw a touchdown, right, to uh, uh, Travis Kelsey. Because his girl was there, bro. <laughs> what are we playing? Are we talking about high school football right now? <laughs> Two Kansas bro, girls bro, we there, man. About football league. But what does it got to do with Taylor Swift, man? I don't. I kind of understand what you <laughs> call it. Hey, man, man, you running me hot right now, bro. You don't, <laughs> man. You gonna make? I'm like, bro, I'm really you trying want me to tell the truth. Man, tell the truth because you ain't making no sense. You telling lies right <laughs> now. Don't lie. Don't lie. What I told, does, bro? I, I said, I said, bro, let me give me a minute. Did I, I say that? Right, I'm gonna give you a chance to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Swift, the, the Taylor Swift impact is for real. What does God do with the Kansas? All right, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. Right. Be quiet. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Travis Kelsey, man, he caught what nine balls for 149 yards in the first half because of Taylor Swift. That's what you saying? Oh, my boo here. My boo here. So I got the ball the fuck out. Was, oh, my boo thing is here. That's what you guys say? That man was balling out before Taylor Swift ever came on deck, man. Stop, bro. Come on, man. You hey, tripping, bro. man. Force multiplier. Hey, man. Kansas City is still number one. Although they took an a L. They lost to Detroit in overtime, right? You yeah. had nine drop balls. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Seven drop balls in that game. Oh, that first game of the season. First game yeah, of the yeah, season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Against Denver, five turnovers, mm-hmm. right? Drop touchdowns, mm-hmm. right? A, 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 a muff punt by okay. McCole Hart, who just came back from the Jets. Facts. Five right. turnovers. Okay. That said, they are still the standard bear in the AFC, Kansas oh, okay. City Chiefs. Okay. Still okay. number one. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I can give you that. But I will say this, though. Um, you know, you already know how I feel about Kansas City. You know? <laughs> yeah, I do. They coming out the AFC, so just deal with it. I just, then we're going to say that for, we're going we're gonna to do a podcast. It's going to be called the State of the Union in the AFC. But, um, you know, uh, Kansas City, 
I think coming out of it. But I think as of right now, excuse my friends, they had some trouble. They in some serious trouble, and I'm going to tell you why they in trouble. The receivers are not coming along the way I would thought they would be by now. And I know they got a couple of good young wide receivers and things like that, and they look real From cute. From SMU, you got yeah, Rice. Yeah, yeah, right. Texas boy. I'm not mm-hmm. hating. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I hope that he do progress. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not hating on the Texas mm-hmm. kid. Skylar Moore. And- but yeah. what nobody's peeping is we all know who Kelsey is, so we don't even got to talk about that. We, I'm definitely not going to even mention Taylor name because I'm just sick of her <laughs> being involved in football. Hey, so man, that Taylor hey, Watch girl, out for the Swifties. Bro. Yeah, whatever. Watch out for yeah, the they, Swifties. They, 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 watch out we, for the Swifties. Our podcast might get canceled early because you know the Swifties, boy, they don't play. Those Swifties might. <laughs> you know what? Let me apologize. I just don't want to hear about her. <laughs> Let me be politically correct. I might be telling too much of the truth right here. The podcast is called Tell the Truth, but I'm just telling the truth. I don't want to hear about Taylor Swift in football. I'm sorry, you know. But anyway. That's the Chicago in you right man, there. Yeah, I don't want to hear all about all that, man. Anyway, bro, but the thing that no one paid attention to is everybody knows Kelsey's balling. But the number two threat this year in Kansas City in the air has been Watson. And no one's talking about that. But you got to be a guru to understand what you, what's missing with them. So when they went to that Denver game last week, and Denver was getting seven. I pounded that. I'm like, yeah, give me the seven. Now, I didn't think Denver was going to win, but I knew Denver was not going to lose by more than seven at home. Plus, they played, them, they, played them, they played them tight. So I'm like, yeah, give me the seven. But the reason why I really took it, because Watson wasn't playing. And just in case y'all don't know who Watson is, Watson is the second tight end for Kansas City. You know what I'm saying? Right. And he's hella good. His number is number 84, just in case you don't keep up with the names. Mm-hmm. He's number 84. You know what I'm saying? Right. But he's that dude. He's really that good. Mm-hmm. So when he goes out, that changes the dynamic for everything because majority of the passes this year have been going to Kelsey and they've been going to Watson. Yes. And so now you already kind of suspect with the receivers on the outside. You got you don't have um, um, Watson, you know, so now teams can focus on Kelsey a little bit more. And don't get me wrong, it's hard to focus on Kelsey because Kelsey just be out there to be, I don't know what. It, Mahomes said he, he only run. Routes. He said he only run routes. He does it right. So he just out there doing skip to my Oh, there's an open spot and just so that's hard to defend that type of that type of shenanigans and fuckery because he's not even really truly running the routes. So it's still gonna make him very difficult to stop. Don't get me wrong. Yes. But at least you don't gotta worry about Watson and that that do make a difference. So me personally, I'm thinking how long is he gonna be out? Uh, he'll be lot, back. He'll be back for the playoffs. He should. But I do, I do think this. KC played Miami this week in London. No. Oh, uh, Germany. Germany. You're right. Yeah, you're right. They already played the three London games. You're right. In Germany. Germany. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and so this is the type of game, believe it or not, that I think KC – oh, yeah, I'm going to let you get the close-up. I think, I think KC will lose. They're going to lose this game. Pause right there. Like, oh, you, got, you, got, you got the floor. Go ahead. Pause right They're there. They're going to lose this game, though. Denver was a trap game. Okay. Right? They waiting on this game. Mm-hmm. Right? You're going to have Guru Mind versus Guru Mind. Two Mac great that, play callers. You understand? Two, this, this is a game right? of great coaching. So this, right? is all, this is my type of game all day long. Right? Yeah. Right? Right? Mike mm-hmm. Daniels. Mm-hmm. Mike McDaniels. Yeah. Who's from, okay, <clears throat> okay, for you subscribers and, and, and listeners and viewers, get right? Him, get him, Uncle Billy. Mike Mike McDaniels and Kyle Shanahan and Sean McVay was all on the same team, right? Facts, so, facts, <laughs> facts, facts, facts. <laughs> With Washington Commanders. Drop these knowledge. Drop that knowledge. <laughs> right? And so, you know, and Mike Shanahan comes from Bill Walsh, right? That tree. So that's where it all comes from. So all of them run... Right, the West Coast offense, right? Mm-hmm. Mike McCarthy for the Cowboys. He come from under that tree. Andy Reid come from that tree. He was mm-hmm. under Mike Holmgren, mm-hmm. right? Steve Mariucci, mm-hmm. right? We go on and on and on now with that entire tree. But Mike McDaniel's mm-hmm. and Andy Reid, the coach for the Miami Dolphins and Kansas City Chiefs, head to head, two of the top five play callers in the game. And let me interject on this too. Let me right. interject on this too. Um, there's a lot of coaches 
quarterbacks in the NFL that call plays, right? Yes. But you know they call a play, but they don't they don't know how to do what I like to call play calling, and there's a difference. Yes. See, there's a difference. That's why I say I can only watch football with certain people. There's, so it's, sometimes you might the great coaches he might call a certain play. And he might only get two yards, and the fans will be like, why are you running that bull crap? You know, and it's like, trust me. And he might go back to that play, and it might be a different play off that same look, and next you know, the dude catch the ball and he hit his head on the damn goal post, he got a touchdown. So that's what you call play, true play calling. I'm going to call yes. this to see what the defense do, and I'm going to, oh, look what you're going to do? Oh, that's the defense you're going to show me? Oh, I'm about to counter that ass. Bop! Hit my head on the goalpost and give me some popcorn. I'm gonna be over there with the chili. We're gonna be celebrating. Play the band. You know what I mean? I'm gonna and set you up for the come up. Exactly. And mm-hmm. so these two coaches are that type of coaches. Mm-hmm. Like they call and stuff like, mm, okay, that's the type of defense you wanna play. I got something for you, my boy. So mm-hmm. on this game, who you think gonna win? Kansas City. <laughs> man, why? Why, man? Hey, 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 have you heard that song, Us versus hey. Them? Who you think gonna oh, you, win? You know, that's my song. <laughs> if it's us versus who you think I'm with? <laughs> hey, hey, that's my, hey, you know that's my Kansas song. City. Hey, you, hey, how you say? Yes. I know you like blues and jazz. You listen you know, a little bit of hip hop. Yeah, you know me. Bit, I call, I bit. call it bumpity bump. You know, right. I like that bumpity bump. I like that. I might not understand everything they saying, but I be like, who you think gonna win? I, my fault. Right. <laughs> but no, why you think they gonna win, man? Man, they've been there, done that. Okay. Mm. It's only one. It's only one. It's only a few players on the Miami <laughs> Dolphins team that have been there. Tyreek Hill, Cheetah, one of them. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, they got four people, right? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, 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 our chain is is on IR that can run 22 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. They have a true track team, the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Facts. Right? Facts. Mm-hmm. But Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey, they get up for these type of games. All right. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you why Kansas City going to take the L. Talk to All me. All right. These are the type of games, if you go look at Kansas City history over the last two years, big games in the middle of the season. Last year they won one and one They barely got by Cincinnati in the regular season. I'm talking about the regular season games. And Buffalo beat them. So my thing is that I just see Miami being so pumped up for this game, like real pumped up. And you got Tyreek, first time playing against his old team. I just think he's going to want to get loose. And the truth of the matter is, if you really know the strength and weakness of these two teams, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's really not the Kansas City offense. The matchup in this game is going to be Kansas City defense. Because them boys are balling. A lot of people don't know that. Kansas City got some Top five defense. Kansas City got some good young-ass DBs. Have not allowed more than 21 points this season. Talk to them. Mm-hmm. Talk to them, mm-hmm. but you got to really know your sports and know this stuff. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you know, another thing that, um, like, you told me this last year, and I was like, man, I really don't know what he's talking about, but he was right again. And that was that they were the first team ever in the Super Bowl that started five DB, I mean, five defensive players that were rookies. How you start five rookies in the Super Bowl mm-hmm. on defense? When you got defense, but besides offensive line, they got to communicate to pick up blitz. But defense got to really pick up, like, hey, man, he going to your side, you know, man in motion. unit. And the unit. Mm-hmm. And they actually pull it off and win a Super Bowl with a bunch of rookies, yes. five rookies. So I'm really looking forward to see that Miami off, uh, wide receivers versus the Kansas City secondary. Only thing I don't like about that game, man, they playing that game at 8.30 in the morning, Billy. Who? How did they let that game? <laughs> That's supposed to be an NFL game in a week, a three thirty or Sunday night or a Monday night. But but mind you, they are like what seven hours ahead. The game is going to be played in, our in t- Germany, right? At our time, I think it's eight thirty. Eight thirty. It's eight eight thirty. So you fast forward to seven hours. It, right. It, That's three thirty. It, it, dog, it might, it's night over there, but I'm talking about it needs to be playing at nighttime over in our country, man. Man, it's they American football. We come first. It's American football, man. What the heck wrong with you, bro? Anyway, yeah, I know. It should it, be a late game. It, those should be late games to your point. That's something else. You know why? Because the teams that go play overseas, the very next week, both of them go <coughs> by. No, they actually cut that out, bro. 
They actually stopped that. They stopped that. Go look it up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm dropping it. Yeah. Go, you, I know you want to challenge me on it. You think I'm wrong. Go ahead. We got the computer. We got the computer Kansas, right there. Kansas City and Miami get a bye next week, though. That that one, they might do. But, yeah. but the ones when they play early this year, uh, over in um, was it, uh, London. London. Uh, when Baltimore played Tennessee, bang it right back at the next week. Sure did, Come Baltimore on. don't get a bye to week 13. Come on, man. You know, this is the show. I tell you the truth, baby. Yeah. Come on. Tell the truth. <laughs> tell the truth, baby. You know that. <laughs> but no, so this is the type of game that I just right. think that right. Miami will pull out because I just see them really being eager about this. Now, I will say this. Kansas City losing last week don't give me as much confidence that my and Miami will win because I don't see them actually losing two in a row. But as of right now, this type of game, I'm going to take Miami, man. I'm going to take Miami with it, man. So, yeah, man. Uh, Billy got KC. I got KC. I got Miami. Man, so uh, we – just look at it, and the point spread on that game is uh, Kansas City minus two and a half on oh. a neutral site. Oh, my, so KC favored by two and a half. Minus, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take the two and a half points. I'm gonna take Miami. You know, I might, I might, I might move it up a little bit. Uh, uh-huh. You know, so that way I can make it three, and that way I got the, uh, okay, I got the field goal. Yeah, well, I know two. You know, the tease yeah. is when you you're six, but you can pay a little money uh, to yo, get that half a point. It, get the half point. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna move it two and a half. I'm gonna take the three, man. And I'm taking, I'm taking Miami, man. So you, 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 you gotta you, move it three and a half. Because the field goal, right. least, you know what I'm saying? We can do I that, too. But, uh, but, 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 but <laughs> we talking about the game last night, you know? <laughs> hey, tell but, the truth out the door. Right, right. Any, <laughs> any lines or any bets we tell y'all we want to take, uh, this is not financial advice. So <laughs> please do not hold us accountable. We're just right. talking freely amongst ourselves in front of the camera. But exactly. just without the line, you got KC and I got Miami, man. Yeah, so, straight up. Yeah, straight up. Yeah, yeah. yeah without yeah. the line. Without the line. Well, what are we moving subscribe. on to next, man? Make sure you subscribe. Hit the like button if y'all like this, man. The Truth, Tell the Truth podcast, man. Just hopefully bring you guys something different. Our goal is basically to talk about sports, of course, but then we want to tell you why certain teams are winning and certain teams are losing, whatever the case might be. Man, we got a couple more minutes, but we got we got one more topic we got to talk about, Billy, before we get out of here, man. Okay. You know, we might talk about, about maybe eight, ten minutes, but let's talk about the State of the Union on the Colorado Buffalo. I'm, yeah. Dion, my man. I'm a big Dion fan. Okay. Me and you did make a bet for the season started. Yes, we did. Okay. All right. So I bet this man to my left, my brother, for the game season started. And I bet it like two more of my cigar buddies I smoke with that two of them, and you wanted the two, you know, I ain't going to say how much the weight. I don't care if they know about the weight. But anyway, not much. We bet like 50, 60 bucks. Anyway. I bet him that Colorado will have five wins before the season starts. Hey, no, no, more than five. Well, well, yours is more than five, right? I got one uh, friend, five, and then two with you and my um, other buddy have to have six. You know, have to have six. So they started off good, and it's not looking good right now. Now, with yours, if, if they hit five on the head, then we consider that to be a push. But right. so if you hear us talking about future podcasters, making fun of each other and everything like that about Colorado, you know why. But right now, we're not going to talk about our wage anymore. I just want to ask you, what do you think? Uh, your view right now on how the season started and where they at, you know, uh, you know, as they, as they you know, football uh, program. I don't want to say organization. Yeah, as a program. Man, listen. <clears throat> you know, Dion brought a lot of excitement. Mm, facts. But the state of the program, the Colorado culture, mm-hmm. fools go. Ooh, come on, Billy. Fools go. Come on, bow tie, Billy. Don't do that. Fools don't go. do that, bro. Come on. Let me explain why. Oh, man. Nah, don't Dion do turned over the roster. Coach Prime turned over the roster. <sighs> 82 players. Okay. So, therefore, there is no culture. And in college, more than anything else, culture is vital. You said you so you telling me that there's no culture or you just don't like the culture? Because there's a difference. Yeah. There's no culture. Bro, stop. Go ahead. You got the floor okay. though. Go ahead. Thank you. So now that, that that's the baseline. Now they have some great players in the skill positions. But here again, football guru, tell the truth. All right. 
It's all about the trenches. Oh, oh facts, facts. I'm. It's yeah. all. It's all about them square bodies. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. On the offensive and defensive lines, it's about them square bodies that you big, need them. Big hogs. Them big hogs. <laughs> right. You need them. Right. They don't have them. No. They they, they cannot run the ball. They cannot stop the run. Mm-hmm. They are one dimensional on offense. Facts. Okay. So now, right, and, and um, Shadur has been sacked the most out of everybody. They are the most penalized team. And they average less than 50 yards a game in rushing. And they can't stop the run. Everything you said so far is the truth. Right? Right. Right. Cool. Thus, cool. they're 4 and 4. They started out mm-hmm. good. Right. Fool's goal. Right. Right. So, one thing. They've they, lost, for the viewers and the subscribers, they've lost four of the last five games. Facts. Okay. So, well, one thing, like, when I be, like, at different sports bars and I just start debating with people, a lot of times when people debate, they, they, they're expressing from um, their opinion and their feelings. So as soon as someone debate me and they say. Which comes up hating. Right. Okay. Right. So as soon as someone tells me, uh, well, I think, I'm, not, I'm like, I'm not listening no more. Like, because right. when I do a debate with someone, I'm coming with facts. That means something that, not my thoughts. Real Here's my Bingo. You know, and so everything you're saying, I have to agree with besides one thing. I do believe there is a culture. I think it might not be a culture that you like. But now we're getting into opinions, so I'm not going to debate you too hard on that aspect. But I do believe, single in my heart, there is a culture. But when you, if you ask me, what is uh, the state of the uh, program? I'm going to say that the program is on the way up. Billy, they had one win last year. Four hundred percent. So if you, whatever you made last year, and if I told you, man, that's times that by four, how would you feel about it? Great. <laughs> you see my boy? Like, so I'm coming with my facts too. So, like, yeah, they I might not win my wager with you. That might be a little I don't know if they're gonna win another game this Cheater year. Right. Eight, yeah. hey, you know, eight, hey, eight, hey, Colorado, I need two more wins. I need two more. Anyway, but uh yeah, but you know, I, I slide in your DM. I need two more wins. But anyway, I might not win, you know, my friendly wager with my brother, you know, but uh, just looking at the program overall, bro, I believe is on the way up. I also believe the way Dion is doing things is definitely bringing out a lot of haters. And you can see that a lot when they played that Oregon game and it was in Colorado. And when that when I saw uh, uh, the coach, no, 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 it was in Oregon. It was in Oregon. That game, it was in Oregon. Yeah, it was in Oregon. When I saw them, when I saw the coach, I think it was like 14, 0, 21, something like that. And the ball was like on their own, like 18, something like that. It was about four or five games ago. And he he they was gonna punt and he did a fake punt. That was Oregon. Yeah, it was Oregon. When I saw them do that, I was like, yeah, he trying to embarrass DI. Like he he trying to really embarrass him. He knew the game was on ABC. And a lot of times people were watching stuff, and this is why we ask people to watch our podcast. In this podcast, what we want to accomplish is it might we might say stuff that you already knew, but we want you to know kind of like why it happened. Right. Why is this going on? Why is this team losing? Why is this guy behind the curtain? Exactly. And a lot of times, you it's just you know being around that type of scene, watching it, and then talking to different people that you know we don't say too much. A lot of our sports and stuff like that, you kind of know. And when I saw that, I was like. Yeah, they about to try to run the score up on these boys. And and, and and they did. And they don't have those those dogs, like you said, you know, in the trenches. That's why when you said that, you know, there's no debate for me at all. Like they're they're not ready on the in, in the trenches, you know. But on the outside, skill the wide position. receivers and the and the court and, and wide receivers and DB I like their skill position players. I think they're pretty good. They're not saying they're the best in the nation, but they're not too far off. And some of the teams they play, they had better skill positions, you know. But, you know, when you look at it, you know, the trenches, they're in trouble. And before we get out of here, and we're talking about you and our friendly wager, 
I think they in trouble because I'm going to tell you this, man. They got to play uh, Oregon State. They Arizona. got to play Arizona. Now, I'm going to tell you something about Arizona. Um, once again, this is a friendly tip. Uh, but any advice we tell you on gambling is not financial advice, but bet on Arizona. So I'm going to say. I ain't talking about particular games, but they want me some money this week. And then the week before that, they went to Washington State. In Washington State. And Washington State was ranked number 19 at the time and blew the doors off them boys, 44-9. to nine. And uh, I, I'm, I hate the fact I don't got his name right now, but Arizona got a wide receiver number two. Whew! Real nice. Real right. nice. He kind of reminds me of DJ Moore, the Bears. Uh, he's real stocky. The first guy don't get him down. And I noticed him in the USC game. USC had a very hard time beating them. And they had to go to, I think, double or triple level. Time, yeah. Man. So I peeped him in, and I started watching him. And I was like, maybe that was a one-off. And every game I've seen him, this number two dude from Arizona, y'all going to see him play against Colorado. They won last week. They won last week. Yeah, I was getting um, three. They uh, pulled Oregon State. They beat Oregon State. They beat Oregon State. They beat Oregon State. Beat Oregon State. Beat Oregon State. Beat Oregon State. So that's, that's, that's two ranked teams in a row. And the week before that, they barely lost to USC. And, and, and to trust double, me. Double overtime. So use Dion words, man. They coming too. You know what I'm saying? They coming. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I don't know if they can get another win, you know, but with time to tell. But if to answer my own question, bro, just being honest with you, um, I like what Dion is doing. I know you didn't say you don't you don't like what he's doing. You don't you didn't say that. You said there's no culture, you know. I like what he's doing. I really do. I believe they have a culture. There might be a culture with a lot of rappers. You know, it might look like a <laughs> window dressing. Here we go. It might look like a BET award over there. <laughs> my people, man. Come on, man. I love my people, man. I love everybody. I love everybody. Let me first say that. I love everybody, man. Exactly. But if I, but some things that we do, some people might not understand, but they got to understand what we say is the culture. It's not like, you know, trying to say something, uh, not trying to include people that's, that's not African-American or black. It's just some things people that we do, you know, you're going to see. But we, we can look at it like, ah, okay, we get it. You know, <laughs> we, got, we know just because a guy got a chain on and a hat and glasses does not mean he's a thug. He's just like, hey, man, I, this is how I feel today. You know what I mean? Right. So a lot of times that threatens people the way he looks and presents himself. But we know, man, you're a cool dude. you got a good heart. I really genuinely believe that he loves the kids. I mean, not to put your business out, but people getting to know more about both of us. I mean, you work with kids in track. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I know you take that very serious. Absolutely. And Dion started off in the Dallas area with these kids. Mm -hmm. um, the little running back, I think his name, he coached him at Pee Wee. Then mm -hmm. in. Uh, the true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and then, then, then high school. So he's been working. Some of these kids have been following him. You know, so in that aspect, man, I think the culture, to answer, to answer when you say there's no culture, I got the perfect word for you. I think the culture in Colorado, truth be told, is love. And on that note, we about to get over out of here, man. Pleasure, my brother, man. Thanks That's for right. watching. Man, tell the truth. It's our podcast, man. Make sure you hit the button, subscribe, all that good stuff, man. Billy, you got anything you want to say before we get out of here, my brother? I'm good, man. Thanks for telling the truth. Tell me. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. And Billy was wrong and I was right. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>